All right, welcome to a new episode of Real Estate vs. Technology. As uh, we are on Real Estate vs. Technology Unleashed, and I'm like, all right, hold on, let me just double check really quick to make sure that we're good. So we're good. I'm like, um, am I in the right setup here? Yep. But uh, we're we're good to go as far as the audio and also the video. Super excited about today's episode because I've been following this guy for quite a while and seeing him around. He's a top agent here in the Arizona market, and I just admire him and what he's up to and what he's doing. He was at a call tattoo event for the um, side for his successful misfit side. So shout out call tattoo. Check out his episode. He was also here too in the studio. He actually inspired me. He was on a different podcast and stepped my game up with this this recording studio. So uh, today we have the one and only Blake on the show. I'm gonna go ahead and change the camera angle so we can go ahead and see him. And uh, and as you watch and go through this process, the goal here is just to be super brilliant to get a sound engineer bef behind the desk that can actually do all the things that I'm doing live during the during the episode, man. Welcome to Real Estate Versus Technology. I'm excited to have you on. Thanks, brother. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. Of course, man. Of course. So uh, the show is all about you, the community, to, to serve the community, add more value at the end of the day. Um, you know, it's unleashed for a reason because we could just like go deeper, unleash, no hold back. It's all good. Fuck this. Say whatever. I don't care. So... So a lot of people out there probably know who you are. We talked a little bit before we got on the show. You've done everything from a little bit of like drop shipping, had a lot of, got two rewards with that, had some success with that. Uh, yep. You've done some rebranding. Your office looks dope. I love the limited, lim limitless brand. I yep. uh, know some of your agents in your office as well. Like real estate was always something in the back of your mind or or yep. where did this entrepreneur journey even start? Bro? No, I got here on accident. And I really? Hate tell, yeah, I hate to tell people that because it was completely by accident for sure. But yeah. Um, I had worked, uh, started up super just blue collar back in the day. Like we ended up, uh, just very quick backstory, but ended up here in Arizona on accident. I had a little brother that passed away when I'm originally from Las Vegas. Uh, we lost our Sorry house just because my dad, yeah, my dad didn't, uh, wasn't doing too good at the time, obviously given the circumstances. So we yeah. literally, when we came to Arizona, we had 500 bucks in our pocket and we stayed wow. in the uh, office building in downtown Phoenix. That a friend of ours had and they said you guys can stay basically on a you know little mattress back here <laughs> so we did that so my dad was able to get a job we got a rental property over in south phoenix uh lived there for about a year year and a half had a couple yeah. cars stolen not a good part of town we didn't know that coming to arizona because we were like well we don't really know anything about arizona so after living there you know we were like yeah we probably need to move and we ended up in a super small town called uh, maricopa arizona out there is what it was so okay uh, went to high school out there graduated shout out to maricopa high so let's go three there's like 30 something of us that graduated love it love <laughs> from it there uh but yeah like my whole background was always like uh i got my first job at 12 washing airplanes uh, really yeah we didn't have any money my parents were like you want clothes like tired of wearing these like pay less clothes like go get a job that was always the thing when i was a kid get, get to work job. get to work all right yeah. well the only thing you had because everything's out in the middle of nowhere just this happened to be this airplane place when i was a kid wow the school bus would drive past it and so i remember going and asking them hey you guys got anything i can do for some money and they're like yeah you could wash airplanes it was like a skydiving place so that's pretty like, cool all right so that's what i did two bucks an hour washed airplanes from the time i was 12 to the time i was 16 i was able to get a driver's license uh and that was one of the best jobs i ever had everybody laughs like you work for two bucks an hour i'm like well for number one i was 12. I'm yeah like, I even come had on now job. But the, the thing about that job that taught me, like looking back that really I'm so thankful for was that I got paid tips. So ah. I tell people, if you're in a sales position, you should really go work a job that has a low hourly wage. Okay. Uh, and you should get paid on based on your tips. Because the reason for that is, is the more you get paid, it's a result of your customer service to people, right? Ooh, a lot of like people that. go into these, and I was just having this conversation with my son this morning. He's he's 14 and just got his first job this summer. Shout out, Complaining about the the wage, right? He's like, oh, I feel like I should be making more. I was like, you're, yeah. missing, you're missing the opportunity here. You're missing the, the skills that are to be had. Because for example, with me, I was washing airplanes for people, and these would be a bunch of guys that have a lot of money, private yeah. planes, and so I'd be out there with the rag, wiping them down. The nicer I treated them, the more I was on top of it. They give me five bucks, ten bucks, uh, fifteen bucks. So I either was going to make eighteen bucks that day, you know, yeah. a few hours, or maybe make fifty, sixty bucks a day if I had a great personality and I went above mm. and beyond. That carried so well throughout life because guess what? I'm in a sales position now. The Let's better go. you do for people, the better your personality, the more relatable you are. The yeah, you get paid, right? It's a translation I love that. across the board. So. Uh, I'm really glad I didn't have a crutch of a high paying salary where I felt entitled that my, yeah. my pay was based on my attitude. So yeah, did that, uh, got into picking melons and cantaloupe out of the field when I was okay. 16, I was able to get a car, did, yeah. that, did construction for the longest time. And so this one day, this lady gave me, uh, I went to high school with her. She's like, do you want a job, you know, working at a uh, big, it was university of Phoenix at the time, big okay. 
indoor sales job. And okay. she was like, you want a job doing this? And I'm like, I don't know. I've never even had a sales job. What does it entail? She's like, well, they start you off at like 35 grand a year. You get okay. free school. And I was like, okay, all that's great. But is it indoors? Because I was digging ditches for 12 oh, bucks an hour. In Arizona. Arizona. It, yeah, it was, it was hot. So I was like, <laughs> is it in air conditioning? She's like, oh yeah, no problem. You sit in the desk. And I'm like, all right, I'll, uh, I'll give it a shot. And wow. then I went in there and I knew absolutely nothing about sales, but I knew that uh, I did believe in, you know, getting an education, getting a degree and things yeah. like that, just because I saw what the other side of that looked like, like all the guys that were doing construction, digging ditches at the time, like the low level labor stuff, they weren't highly, mm. uh, you know, educated or skilled or anything. I was like, oh, yeah. there's gotta be a better way. And I gotta get myself out of this. So I mainly went to get free schooling, have air conditioning. <laughs> there you go. And uh, yeah, it turned out to be really good at it. I'm like, this is freaking easy. You sit at a desk all day wow. and just make phone calls and talk to people. And, and then you could get up to a 20% raise every six months. First okay. time I'd ever experienced anything like that. I was lucky to get a dollar or $2 an hour raise. That's cool. And so did did really good. Um, everybody else was just kind of complaining. You're like, oh, I got to make calls all day. I'm like, this is nothing. Just yeah, calls. let's go. And uh, yeah, got promoted to management at six, uh, within I think eight months. Did wow. not belong as a manager, guys. I was 22. I knew nothing about people, leadership. I knew, I literally was thrown in the fire. They're like, you're really good at, it, at this job. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have you take over the lowest performing team and we want you to turn it around. And I'm like, all right, cool. And again, I knew nothing about sales at all. Like nothing about leadership, management. Uh, I just knew how to make sales. Yeah. That was it. So, you know, complete ignorance went in. Uh, wiped them all out, fired them all. Like you're not motivated by money. You're not motivated by money. You're not, okay. Bye. Yeah, see you. Fired them all, brought in a bunch wow. of hungry dudes. I did, I did what the company wanted me to do. I, I created a very successful team out of one, right? I hired a bunch of very hungry people, young, That's awesome. young people that were like me. But the problem is, is looking back, my regret is, is I didn't, I, there's probably a lot of people there that realistically were good people that I did not know how to coach and manage. I didn't, oh. I didn't know how to pull the right motivations. I didn't know how to pull the right levers. I didn't know what drove them that I possibly could have made them successful. Yeah. And you learn that over time. Uh, and then they went through a bunch of changes. Uh, the government said you can no longer incentivize your enrollment advisors based off of uh, government subsidized funding, AKA like more mm -hmm. sales they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so uh, they said no more competitions, no more money, no more incentivizing. Wow. So one day I told my team, I was like, hey, whoever makes the most outbound calls, I'll take you guys to lunch. And they, okay. they walked me out the door. That was a competition. And I was wow. at number three highest performing team at 26 years old out of a company of 10,000 people. Interesting. Uh, after that, I was like, I am absolutely done ever working for a big corporation, a big yeah. thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going on my own. That's it. I don't, I don't know wow. what I'm going to do. You know, I'm unemployed at 26, got two kids, one on the way. And I was like, I'm just, I'm, I'm over giving myself. The, yeah. That was seven years of being a top producer to get walked out over taking, telling somebody to take them to lunch. Right. So that's I just started to see it. I'm like, okay, it's just at the end of the day, you're a number. That's what it is, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I got into e-commerce at that time, started uh, my own e-com brands, doing drop shipping, product mm -hmm, development. Mm -hmm. uh, was also driving semi-trucks at night, doing food delivery. Wow. Uh, to put food on the table. And I started doing freelance marketing for um, a couple of doctor's offices that okay. didn't really have like an online social presence. So I kind of was like, well, I'm already doing this on the e-com side. I can do this on the marketing Why side not? for them. Mm -hmm. So I was doing three hustles at once. And then I started bringing in some okay money between all three of those. And I said, well, I don't have a retirement plan. What do I yeah. do? Like, I need to do something with this. I lost my 401k. I lost what the traditional, you know, American dream is of the 401k in retirement. Yeah. I said, I got to, I got to do this. So um, I started doing some studying and the two choices were stocks or real estate. That's like mm. what every wealthy retirement plan is. And I was like, well, stocks don't look that exciting about me. No real estate. I can maybe go do some flips. I can, I don't know. I was like, let me get my real estate license. And the plan was always just to get my license to maybe buy some rentals to purchase as an investment. Okay. That's how I got my foot in the door in real estate. Zero intention of doing it full time. Zero intention of ever selling a house for anybody but myself. Uh, and then, yeah, first year out the gate, I think I sold like six. Okay. Just to some okay. buddies of mine. Cause I'm very, the one thing that makes me uh, do well in real estate is I'm, I take the emotion out of it. They're just yeah, numbers. There's exactly. No, like in a, in a situation where people, it's their home, they love it. They've got an emotional attachment. I completely understand that. But for me, it was always a very business perspective of it makes sense. It doesn't make sense. It's, yeah. You know, I looked very much at bottom line and numbers. And so I take the emotion out of it, but make the sense back in it. And so because of that, I, I did pretty well. And I remember I uh, did my taxes at the end of the year. And I'm like, man, that's kind of crazy. I made, you know, 50, 60K. That's weird. I, man, that's good money for yeah. kind of part-timing it. And then 
second year out the gate, still part time, still working two other jobs, doing the marketing. My yeah. income, I let the the truck driving job go because I was never home at night, so I let that go. Kind of real estate took that job's place, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, the second year I did really good. I think I did something like nineteen or twenty sales, and I was like, "Wow, well, damn, okay, I almost made six figures at this time." Let's I, go. I got something here, and then year three, that was it, all in. Uh, quit my marketing job, kept my ecom still, but pretty much did real estate full time. Launched okay. a team, and the rest is history. So, dude, so that's how I got into real estate. <laughs> that is awesome. I mean, we're what ten minutes in. That was that was quick. That was like a all right zero to here. Here we are. This is everything what we did. Yeah. Quick little round of applause. Okay, just gotta say, and, <laughs> and of course, of course. So. So it's a couple of things that stuck out for me for the viewers and listeners out there is that like you talked about with your son and you talked about also with your pay. And the biggest yeah. thing was that came up for me. And I don't know if it came up for anyone in, in who's listening. And if you're on YouTube, comment below is that it doesn't matter about the actual paycheck or how much you're making on an hourly basis. You saw the writing on the wall and said, hey, there's an opportunity here for me to go the extra mile yep. and make these individuals see my potential, make them feel good, go the yep. extra mile. And here's a tip. And, and so what was the conversation like for your son this morning when you had that? I'm just curious. Well, it, it goes so much further than my son. I was laughing about this because being in real estate, this is every agent's problem out there. And it became even more aware True. as I was a brokerage owner. And let me put this in an example for you. When people come in and interview with my brokerage, one of the very first questions they ask me, what's my split? What do I care about? Hmm. Okay. You're... You're entering into it saying, what do I get out of this for me instead of what can I learn here from you? Yes. Then why are you here? Right? Like, like Agreed. Our splits are extremely competitive, but you right there, if that's your first question to me, really is like what you care about is your splits. Like, here's the thing, like you're going to pay for education one way or the other, right? You're going to pay for it through ignorance, not Mm -hmm. being able to do transactions because by you not doing deals or not doing as many deals as you could, you're still paying for it in the form of not earning that money, right? So my mentality on it was, because this is my experience. When I got into real estate, uh, I had that mentality. I had a guy that got me into it. He was one of my friends when he was like, yeah, I'll help you get your real estate license. Oh, here, go to this brokerage. Hmm. My my previous broker was an amazing guy. Very good resource. Very tenured uh, guy. Been doing it 20-something years. However, the structure of the business was flat fee. It was cheap. It was Interesting. 250 bucks a file, like at the time, cheap as hell, ran it out of his house. Yeah. And my one of my, my coworkers uh, at the time, the guy that got me into it, he's like, oh, go here. It's cheap. It's cheap. That's what I kept hearing the theme. Like, oh, it's cheap. You don't need to pay splits. I'm like, okay. I was there for two years and I did okay, right? Yeah. But it was like having blinders on because I wasn't around people that were like at scale, at mm. volume. They didn't have systems. They didn't have processes. I We never got together. We never mastermind. We didn't learn anything. And so for two years, I I almost feel like I, looking back, I lost so much money. Like I I saved money on a transaction fee or a team split, but I firmly believe like had somebody held my hand two to three years in and gave me the knowledge that I acquired Mm. in year three, four, five, when I really went out and like explored, yeah, uh, man, I would have been making way more money. Like, like, so, so it cost me money. Like I tell everybody that like you there's agents right now that are sitting in a position where they're getting no coaching, no helping. They're not surrounded by other people doing 60, 70, 80 transactions a year to show yeah. them what that looks like. And they think, well, I'll stay here because it's cheap. Well, okay, but you're doing five transactions here at flat fee. What if you were paying some splits, but somebody could teach you how to do 40 transactions yeah. here? You're tripling your income, right? If I told you, pay me, would you pay me, you know, 50% uh, splits? And I always use this as an example. It's my favorite question in, in uh, brokerage terms is, I charge you 50%. How much do you make per year at your brokers? Like, well, I'm making 60K a year. Okay, cool. Mm. What do they charge you on splits? Well, I'm super cheap. I'm 90, 10. Okay, cool. If I charged you 50, 50, mm. but you took home half a million a year, would you do it? No. And I'm like, why? Why would you not? That's 50%. Yeah, but you're taking home half a million after my 50%. Yeah. yeah. No, like they, in the, like that right there tells me you're not, you you can't see the big picture. Now I don't charge 50% by the way, Yeah, but I always use that as an example because people's mindsets in the wrong way. So I told my son the same thing this morning, he was going in and he's like, well, I can go over here and get two bucks an hour more. And I said, okay. okay, but what's the future business opportunity? That job, you're not really working with people. The job he's in now, he got a job with a friend of mine that owns a, a high end auto uh, customization shop. Okay. So they do clear bra, clear paint. I mean, they're working on cars like Lambos, Rolls Love it. on, stuff like that. I'm like, you yeah. don't understand the amount of people that you're coming in and meeting every day that are high income earners that come in and out of the shop that you can work with. Yeah. Uh, you're not understanding the behind the scenes of running a business next to this guy. Like, you need to think about all the skills you're acquiring right now that are going to basically make you skip a lot of processes right Amen. so you're paying that yes you could be making two bucks an hour more but it's no different than you just taking that and saying i'm paying this for the cost of education those skills you're learning right now will 
tenfold you down the road if you just be a little patient, right? This 100%. is no different than agents when they get in the business. So I'm going to go the cheapest over here. Da, da. Yeah, but you're going to pay the cost. You're either going to yep. pay the cost in the form of a split with somebody that can show you how to go from top to bottom really fast, or you're going to pay the cost in ignorance and not make the amount of money you should be making, and you're going to stay as a low-income earner until you finally say, okay, I'm going to get around some hyper. Because you're not going to wake up one day magically if you stay in the same environment like, aha, I got yeah. it. Boom. No. no. Mm-hmm. I learned everything I learned by paying for mentorship. Believe me, like when I was a solo agent, I, I did okay. I was 80K, 80K, 100K. Okay. My game changers were when I went to a friend of mine and I said, hey, I need to start a team. I don't know what the hell I'm doing and I'm not around anybody. Like my old brokerage, mm-hmm. they didn't run teams. I said, and I need, I started a team only because I needed help. It's not like, yeah. hey, no, it was literally, I was doing five to eight transactions a month on my own. The paperwork, the showings, mm-hmm. the everything. And my wife's like, listen, between your other job and this, you've got no life. You need go get a, go get yeah. somebody to help you. I was like, I don't even know what that looks like. I don't even know what a team split looks like. I called a buddy. I said, can I, and he ran a successful team. He had okay. like 40 people. And I said, can I pay you to teach me? He's like, yeah, that's fine. How, he goes, actually, how about I trade you? You teach me e and I'll teach you a team. I there said, you go. Fair enough, man. He taught me that in my business. Boom. Like literally wow. my income tripled the next year. Same thing, guys. When I went to go start my brokerage, I didn't just sit and I'm this is mind you, I'm like at the top of one of the top teams, top of my game for sales yeah. and production. I could have had the mindset of I'll just figure this out. I know enough about real estate. I'll figure out my brokerage thing. No. I said, let me just right out the bat, let me learn. I'm gonna go find mm-hmm. somebody that so I went and found a friend of mine that runs a successful, smaller kind of boutique brokerage. Yeah, uh, similar to what I was looking for. And I said, Let me can I can I pay you to teach me? He's like, Absolutely. Love it. Paid him, brought me in for a week, gave me his entire playbook do this, do this, do this, don't do this. This is, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't do this. And boom, wow. we, we blew up. Like we're at 50 some agents now. Yeah. So like if I had to impart any wisdom on you guys, you know, stop looking at the cost of everything up front and really look at like the cost that you're missing out of the cost opportunity because you could ramp up. So many people can ramp up so much faster than what they do right now. 100%. And that's the question I would ask anyone who's listening and viewing is like short-term, long-term. Short term, yeah, you can make more money. Long term, there's opportunities, people that you can be in front of, and who knows what can happen out of that. Like your son could, who knows, meet who, yep. and I don't know, start his next business, or who knows what in yeah. that opportunity. What, who am I getting around? That's like that's the thing. Like you're always you're always gonna have a cost to be around high value people. Yeah, always. Like you're not gonna hang around somebody that's like a multimillionaire that's just chilling, you know, at low level places. It's just what exactly. It is. Like you know what I mean. It, so when you look at it that way, you're like, okay, I want to be a top performing agent. Who are you surrounded by every day? Who, mm-hmm. how, how can you get into their circle and learn their systems, their processes, their skills, their daily routines? You know what I mean? If you're in a certain, if you're in another form of business, how can I get around people? Well, usually it's going to cost a little bit of money, either through the form of cor- coaching, mentorship, being in the same company. It doesn't matter, but you have to get yourself into those circles and learn those habits one way yeah. or the other. Yeah, 100%. And I'll be 100% honest right now. We're on Real Estate First Techniques Unleashed. And, you know, starting a podcast can get you in bigger rooms. Yeah. And like one of the reasons why I wanted you on the show is because you're playing bigger. And I, I know that you're a big player in the market. I've only been here for three years in Arizona. I want to be able to network and meet new people. And I feel like just even just being around that person, the energy, like they yeah. say, like you're the some people, the five most people you Absolutely. set yourself around. And that's why I'm like, all right, like I would love to hear your story, have you on the show. So anyone listening and watching, get in bigger rooms, get on podcasts. There's so many more additional opportunities. And I got a question for you on the money subject. What was the biggest change in your mindset from like, okay, I, I, I don't know if you ever thought like you wanted all this money, you wanted all this success, but now that you have it and you have money, you have the means and you have the things that you have, what's changed? Like what value wise has the value of money changed for you? It's opportunity. Yeah. yeah it's not even like, you know, growing up super poor, like money is like the topic always right like, yeah uh your poor like can't afford it can't afford it can't have this can't have that oh bills are due right so like money mm-hmm. is seen as a negative okay a kid right in a yeah. way it's like it's something that's always elusive you can't have it so like me growing up it was like oh, i gotta have this right and it's interesting because my sister and i grew up in the same environment i have a sister who's a teacher and, okay uh she doesn't make great money she does she does okay but she Shout took a teachers. super yeah she took a i think she's way underpaid i tell her all the time to get out of that business because she her skill set's higher but yeah um the the difference is is like my mentality was i need to make as much as i possibly can to get as far away from the situation i was in i don't ever want to have to worry about a bill ever again like i literally hated seeing my parents do that or my sister was the opposite. She was like, well, I'm going to go to get the safest job possible. I'm going to get a job that has mm. a retirement, the 20 years, the whole yeah. thing, the whole nine, right? The state benefits. And I was like, that sounds absolutely horrible. Yeah. 
same intention. Like her and I both have the same feeling of we need to do better than our parents did, but it's how we chose that form of safety. So for me, yeah. the more I can make these days, the more opportunity it creates for me. So what I mean I by that. that is like, I've I got nice cars. Like I've had a couple of Lambos now and G wagons, all this stuff, you know, yeah. nice boat and all that. It, but what I will tell you guys is, is it, it's very true. Like everybody says, yeah, once you have it, it's not, and it's very true. It's not fun. It is. It's, it's that you get that taste and it's exciting. And you're like, Oh my God, I got this. I remember I finally was able to buy my first Lambo and I, I made a promise. I was like, you got to pay cash. I don't want to really, loan. yeah, I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't take a loan on it. I, Cause it was just, it was like a thing to me. I was like, it, they're financially a horrible investment. Usually, unless you get the right, that's a whole other topic, but yeah, Usually, like supercars and stuff like that are a really bad investment, you know, and I don't recommend going crazy into debt and those things. So, yeah, I just told not. myself, I was like, listen, by the time you're 35, like you're going to buy one, you're going to pay cash. This is what it is. So, I hustled, I reverse engineered my entire year. I was like, here's what I got to do to maintain my current production and volume. Here's what I got to do on top of that, additionally, to earn enough revenue like to pay that. cash. So, that's what I did. And I remember I bought the damn thing and I just sat there, like on a chair in my driveway looking at this. I was like, this is crazy because ever since I was wow. a kid, I wanted one, right? Like, I had the Lamborghini Countach poster on my wall with the scissor doors up. The yep, yeah. I bought it at the Let's go. Fair, had that on my trailer wall, and I was like, one day I would love one of these. And so I remember looking at it and being like, this is crazy. Like, I freaking bought one. Like, it was like almost like disbelief. But then guess what? After like a week, you're like, eh. I, was, I found myself like just walking past it in the garage. And I'm like, eh, it's whatever. Like, eh. Yeah, interesting. The, the excitement wears off, and it really, really does because then it's a uh, what's next, what's next, what's yeah. next, and that's how it is for me. Where you get yourself in trouble is if the what next is always just a material item. See, for yeah. me, I love material. I'm not gonna lie about that. I like it. It's a reward to myself. I of like course, nice things. You Force know, your like ass nice off house, for it. Nice cars, right? Um, I don't believe in the whole like, oh, live as thriftily as, but no, hell no. I work no. too hard. I want to enjoy the nice things. But with Amen. that being said, now is what money is for me is the more that I, I make of it, the more I create. So for example, I've been buying a lot of rental properties. I have okay. a rule that every time I go to buy a toy, I have to buy a rental property before I buy that toy. I like that. So like I just bought my, my, my Performante, but two weeks before that, I closed on another investment property, okay. rental property. Because that way, if I buy a toy that starts to depreciate in value, if that happens, the market's off. It is what it is. I have something else that's at least going up in value to okay. wash it. Yeah. It's just my personal rule. So for me, that's all it is. It's just money opportunities. I use it to pay for coaching, to make more money. I use it to, you know, we all kinds of stuff. We created an office. We bought a building, all that. So all my other agents can come in and learn and grow their businesses. I love so that. No matter what people's outlook is on money, you need it to create experiences one way or the other. And that doesn't always look like, oh, I have nice stuff. But yeah. you can, you know, like we donate every month to a charity that basically pays for battered and abused women that are trying wow, to get out of I bad situations. So we sponsor homes and pay for that, right? I couldn't do that without creating more money and cash flow to, yep. to give back. 100%. You know I mean? We pay for stuff for our kids' schools all the time, coffee events. Like, there's so many things that you can do with money that a lot of people think, oh, you make money, it has to buy a material thing. No, no. It creates opportunities out there for people. So, I, I absolutely love that. I just want to say shout out to all the teachers out there. My yeah. wife taught for 16 years. We just retired her eight months. Thankless job. And it is. And she has her international tea company. I said, you could do it. You're worth more. And she was just yeah. so tired of dealing with people parents. that didn't want to be taught and yeah. the parents and like you know you call a parent it's like that's a whole it's other tough, subject matter man, it's man. tough there's no accountability with kids these days it's, it's just wild like no I hear, I hear some of these stories like a kid gets a bad grade and the parent calls in yelling i'm like no let's make your kid do the damn work that's how it used to be yep. like, put in the work exactly and that doesn't even happen anymore yeah. and also the, on the on the subject matter of the car subject i love that as well and like for me i use it for a toy uh, yeah. for, a, for a tool now so yeah. being able to motivate support people come on the podcast yeah. like, hey let's go take a ride you want to go drive it especially someone doesn't have it it opens so many doors so it's funny and i'll even share this right like i went on a listing appointment yesterday the guy's got a multi-family complex he's like, okay hey, I follow you on instagram you got a lambo i was like yeah he's like me too i got the same one do, 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 do. Uh, i got the job because i had a lambo and we're relatable see like got people like, but the second part of that is, is it gets you indoors, right? So like I could go to car shows, I hang yeah. with other people that have it, I hang around with other high net worth individuals. It's just a thing, guys. But a lot of people don't look at like the opportunity cost behind something like that. You know, 100%. I mean? it's, it's one of those things that just gets you around other high level people and everything. So Yeah, you know. I love that. And so let's kind of segue a little bit into like avatars. And I know you just talked about the car just earned you this luxury 
client. And I know that you were kind of working on the buyer side, first getting in, now you got the yeah. seller side. And then you're like, who is my avatar? And now your yeah. marketing is more for the seller side. Even though you don't take buyers, you do. Yeah. And you want to be more in the luxury market, which you are now in. Yeah. So for viewers and listeners and some, some suggestions, and I can link that video so our team can link that down below for the full version of you talking about being more deliberate and focused on the ideal avatar. Yeah. But just give us a couple one, two points on that for anyone who's kind of like, I don't know who to market to or, yeah. or what to put out there on social. Yeah, you got a couple of choices with this, right? Like you're going to come across as the most authentic, the most compassionate about what you relate to the most. So for example, I was not ready to be a luxury real estate agent when I first got into real estate because I didn't okay. understand anything luxury. I didn't live a life of luxury. I didn't understand the lingo. Mm. Now, it's not to say that for those of you guys listening, you can't do that. But what yeah. it means is I didn't show up as somebody who's like, yeah, I'm very comfortable in this position in space yeah. to have some of these conversations. Uh, when I first started in the business, it's all a progression, right? I was 27, 28, I think at the time. Most of my friends were still renting homes. Mm. Uh, so a lot of my first time clientele was helping some of my friends get into their first home. Yeah, That's just who I hung around with. That was my friend circle. Uh, then as it progressed <clears throat> from, I would say, year like three to five to six, most of my friends had owned a home. They were just starting families and they were ready to sell their first house and get into the next house. So I was okay. doing a lot of buying and selling. A lot of my marketing was because that's who I was. I was that yeah. guy. I had three kids. I'd already owned a home. I was selling it to upgrade. I was selling that to extract equity by a couple of rental properties. When I bought the house that we're in right now, I took the equity and I divided it up, bought my primary, and we bought uh, two other rental properties with okay. a month out of that, right? So mm -hmm. uh, that was what a lot of my marketing went to was a little bit of wealth building in there. And then okay. as I started to make more money, as I started to push myself into higher circles, guess what? The conversation gets easier. It's easier to just sit down and talk business, right? Sometimes if you guys that. are brand new in real estate and you don't have a lot of business experience, and you put yourself in front of somebody who's a business owner that owns a bunch of chains, franchises, and they're talking to you and you can't understand what they're saying, the yeah. tax strategies, you know, the all the things that come along with the, the chatter, right? That with mm -hmm. businesses and you can't relate to that, you're you're gonna have a hard time. Not gonna say it's impossible. However, now in my position, I own a company, I own a business. So when I'm talking to other business owners, I hang out with them. I spend time with them, I mm -hmm. network with them. We bounce ideas off of each other. So guess what? Now I work with a lot of the, the business owners out there yeah. right now. So that's what I would tell you guys. You know, if you're a veteran, specialize with veterans, right? If that's what you relate to and you can share that experience and you got a little bit of a bond with them. I'm like, yeah, I was in the military. You know, you're going to do way better at that than I am. I don't know anything about being a veteran, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. So you would kill me in that space, right? So that would be my biggest thing is just have a very clear idea of what it is that you're most comfortable, what you're most experienced in, what you're most passionate in and dive in on that, but also understand that that's fluid and that, that that's going to change along your journey. Um, who you are today, you might eventually transition into, hey, I'm only going to work luxury. Hey, as I make more money, I'm going to actually be an investor in a multifamily. And then you're going to become very knowledgeable and experienced because you're passionate about yes. that. And you're going to relate to those buyers and sellers and you'll find yourself doing a whole lot more, right? It's just, it's hard to relate to market and sell to something that you're not comfortable with or something you don't believe in. I love that. I love that. And on Real Estate First Technology Unleashed, you never know what's going to happen. Now we're live on Instagram. What's up, everyone? We have the one and only Blake. Check him out. We'll tag him after the live. But it's so true. And I mean, what's your thoughts as far as like getting into bigger rooms? If someone wants to get into luxury, should yeah. they get into bigger rooms, go to golf yes. courses, try to try to somehow some way mingle with that type of clientele? You should not just for the benefit of getting luxury, but just for the benefit of knowledge, because I can tell you guys wholeheartedly, like the conversations at some of those tables are a hundred percent. Like some of those rooms are just 180 degrees different than yeah. what you have on average. I didn't understand this. Right. So uh, for example, being in some of those rooms, the amount of money that it has saved me from like a tax strategy. So I didn't know anything about tax strategies. I didn't understand setting up on PLLCs, paying yourself out as a W-2, investing in rental properties through like depreciation. I mean, none of these things, nobody teaches you if they're no. not actively doing it, right? It's really easy to say, you know, you get your friend over here like, oh, I heard my grandma's uncle's grandpa did this stuff. Mm -hmm. But when you're hanging around people that are, you know, multimillionaires or own big companies and big businesses, and they can, you know, apart some of their knowledge on you, mm -hmm. and, like the stuff you learn, even if, even if it's not with the intention of like, oh, I need to be a real estate agent. It's just the things that you simply learn to apply into tools in life from somebody that's such a high operator yes. is invaluable. And it's not one of those things you're going to learn in a freaking course. Some of the best stuff I learn is just sitting at a dinner table. Like, hey, can I take you out to dinner? Can I hang out? 
or sometimes you got to pay to play, right? Hey, I'll yeah. pay to be a part of this charity event. If I can go get around some of these people and hang out with them and just, you know, maybe friend some of them. My first mentor, I paid $15,000 to the teacher. Interesting. Detail. Yeah. Wow. Everybody's like, that's crazy. You guys should have seen all my friends. Like they're like 15 grand. It's an insane amount of money for coaching. I'm like, listen, I believe in the dude. Like I've been following him on online for a long time. Look at the guy's results. You know, he's yeah. three Lambos, owns a freaking mansion. He's posting his stats. Like I believe the guy. Paid the guy 15 grand and it was one of the single handedly best investments I ever made. I got to go hang out on his yacht in Lake Powell for a freaking week. He brought his wow. entire executive team with me, broke down. Here's my marketing department, my accounting department, my advertising department, how we test products, how we scale products. I went from being like a $1 million a year gross sales, uh, gross, not net, but one dealer yeah. gross sales to the following year, taking everything he taught me and we ramped up to $8 million. Wow. I made back 15 G's in one week, literally going home with my notepad of all the stuff I wrote down that he told me just like that. That's huge. 90% of the people I told, I went and spent 15 grand. Like, that's crazy. Why would you ever do that? Right. Yeah. But that just goes to show the power of knowledge. And it wasn't anything like groundbreaking. I just didn't know it. And he was like, what he, he, he was, you know, years down the road for me. So he was able to package all that up and be like, here you go. Let me teach you. And mm. most importantly, it's learning the lessons that those guys learned the hard way that you yeah. don't need to learn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like 100%. I can tell everybody right now, here's all the really cool shit I did that got me here. But most importantly, had I not done this, I really would have gotten here. Let me tell you what not to do that yeah. I tried that didn't work. Right. That's also just as important. So, oh, 100%. And that's where I feel like the coaching can, and some people are coachable, some people aren't yeah. coachable, and the coaching can get you there in two to five years. And you could do it on your own in 10 yeah. to 15 years. It just depends on how fast you want to get there. And that's amazing how you had that exponential growth just yeah. with that investment. Yeah. And you have to be the crazy one to the, like, I'm going to go for it. And then you're, you lean by example. Then you probably inspired other people that want to do the same thing. So what is like, are you building like passive, like a, uh, like a passive portfolio of doors or whatever the case may be to get out of the business? Like what's the long-term goal? Travel the world, keep doing what you're doing. No, I'll work till the day I die. I, I love it. That they, this is, this is the difference I think between high achievers and high earners is that, um, I, I'm good at what I do because I love what I do and I love yeah. working. It doesn't feel like work. I never wake up, I wake up where I'm like, I hate what I do every day. You know, there's mm -hmm. days I'm unmotivated. Truth be told, I'm unmotivated five days a week. I force myself into <laughs> motivation, but I genuinely love the growth aspect of it. I yeah. Mean, it's not, it's not even a money thing. Money is a great byproduct of that. Money is the opportunity. Right. But for me, it's like, okay, cool. What's next? What's it's always the what's next, not how much next it's yeah. the, what's next what can i build next what can i create next truth be told i've had that thought i said what's what's the i have an exit plan i do have a this is how many properties i'm buying this is how mm -hmm. much cash flow i want here's my baseline but the thought of one day throwing throwing in the towel you know hanging it up and just going and living on a beach is kind of depressing to me it does yeah it, because the thought of that is is like i have so much knowledge i have so much things that I love to apply and pass on to other people. Like one of my favorite things to do is just helping new people come along and like watching them scale. Right. Yes. I love taking these people that get in the business that are like 20, 30 K like, listen, let me teach you, follow my lead here, do what I do. And I'll take you to six, seven figures. Let's go. That's fun to me. And the thought of like sitting on a beach one day feels like I'd be completely wasting what I love doing. I love that. And that, in, the, in my opinion, and you can tell me what your thoughts are on legacy, but I feel like that's a part of your legacy. You can have as much money in the world, but you know, you're going to, yeah, people forget what you said and did, but they won't forget the way you made them There's feel. There's a lot of really rich people that die and nobody knows about them. Oh my God. 100%. But, yeah, that is, that is what it is. And, you know, being on podcasts and putting yourself online and putting yourself out there to other people and them taking that knowledge, you know, knock on wood, anything happens to either of us, but then someone wants to show up and be like, this is how Blake showed up for me. This yeah. is what he did. This is how he showed up. This is how he impacted my family and now created generational wealth. And, yeah. and that's going to tie into their legacy and the whole nine. I, I absolutely love that. So on the real estate side, so you have 50 agents now and what's the goal? 53. 53. On three more this week, yeah. Congratulations. Thank Do you have a goal of how many agents you want to serve? Or you no, just organically? I mean, yeah. It's, it's, we, it's interesting because we went into it. it like I was telling you before, when we were off air, right? When I yeah. had my previous brokerage, it was, I'm not going to name names, but it was just a, one of those big brokerages, big box, you yeah. know, whatever. Um, and my team of 10 was constantly out producing. Like we were doing almost a quarter of that brokerage's production out of almost 280 agents. Between wow. Samples. And it always, it, it bothered me, but it shouldn't have bothered me, but it did bother me. It bothered me in the fact that I saw so much potential being wasted, right? It wasn't, mm. had no effect on my pocketbook. 
don't get me wrong. It's not yeah. like I'm still, we're still doing fine. We're doing sales. We're making money. We're killing it. We're killing it for that brokerage. But I would constantly look at that and say, there has to be talent buried in this 260 people. For that sure. Just isn't getting the help they need that could be good. There's got to yes. be five, 10, 15 of these people in here that could be really elevating themselves. Right. But I wasn't in a position to elevate them because mm. I wasn't the owner. I wasn't the leader. Yeah. And so we started having conversations with the leader and the owner. And unfortunately, their outlook was just kind of like, eh, we're a big box brokerage. They pay their monthly fee. And if they perform great, and if they don't, that's okay too. We're that's what we're about. And I'm like, that's crazy. No. Like what kind of but but unfortunately, that's how some of these brokerages are ran is, is yeah, we make our money on how many people just come hang our license here. We don't care how many they sell, right? Or we make our money based off of recruitment. We don't care how many actual real estate sales they make. Mm. So none of those things made sense to me. And, and so when I went out and I would reach out to some of these other brokerages, when I was like, okay, it's time to take my team into a different environment, I went and met with a couple. And okay. the conversation was, oh, it's cool. If you bring your team over and you recruit a lot of people, you're going to make this much money. But the conversation was never, it's cool. If you bring your team over here, we're going to teach you these next level strategies in real estate. It's going to help you guys produce more. Mm. And that did not make sense to me because I'm like, well, what difference does it make how many people I recruit? If they're not selling houses, none of us are getting paid. 100%. <laughs> it doesn't matter how high I am up on that downline. Yeah. <laughs> so the conversation was very backwards. I'm like, it should be the other way. The conversation should be, we're going to teach you how to be really good at freaking real estate. By the way, if you do good and you perform and you create other high performers, we'll offer an incentive program on the mm. back end where you get a little bit of profit sharing. Conversation's never that. The conversation's always if you get in here and recruit as many people, when they make a sale, you'll get a cut. It's reversed. It's an upside down pyramid. Yeah. I didn't like that. So I said, okay, this isn't for me. I don't, I don't believe in that because your guys' focus is here when it should be here and this will align with that. 100%. Let me just do my own thing. And everybody's like, you're crazy. You don't do it. It's going to be a lot of work. And I was like, well, whatever. I want to be independent and build my own brokerage. And uh, I've loved every piece of it. I mean, it's challenging. It's hard as hell. I didn't yeah. have a lot of resources, cost a lot of money. But to be able to mold a culture around performance and mm -hmm. success is freaking incredible. So um, now we are very much, Hey, if you come over, we're going to give you every single tool resource possible for you, but you're going to put go. in the freaking work. That's it. And if you're yeah. going to be a part-time agent, you're here to hang your license on the side. sell grandma's house once a year, I'm not the guy for you. No, I'm the guy that's going to take you from this much to this much. I'm the guy that's going to show you how to actively invest. I'm the guy that's going to push you to buy one or two rental properties per year so that you're not riding the real estate reel for life. Cause what are you gonna do? Is you're gonna be selling houses till you're 90 years old and you're in your casket? Like no. you have to use your license as a tool and a resource to build wealth for yourself along yes. the way. So like I've got a property right now, one of my listings, I was gonna, I was getting ready to to list. And the guy's like, Do you wanna just buy it as a rental? And I'm like, well, maybe if the numbers make sense, you know, what's we'll going on? He's like, I got a 2.2% interest rate on the thing right now. And I'm like, okay, what do you owe on it? Told me, he's like, okay, I, I can't get a loan because if I get a loan at today's rates, yeah. are you interested in a subject two situation? If I give you this much down and care, he's like, yeah, absolutely. Boom. I bought two of those already this year. Wow. And that's how you guys should be doing this as real estate agents. Yes. As it, the more houses you sell, naturally you're making money doing that. Opportunities will come your guys' way. That crappy house that needs to be flipped. You know, somebody will call you over for a listing appointment. Like, ah, oh, this... I could list it, but honestly, I, I can give you a cash offer. Okay, great. That wouldn't have crossed your table had you not been out there just doing your thing, right? I All love this rental that. opportunity came across the table. Like, There's so many different ways you can utilize your license that no brokerages are really teaching people, and that bothers me. So for us, I'm big on you guys need to actively be investing in yourself as well along the way. I, I love that. And I think there's so many agents out there that think that like they're just doing the transactions and there's so much more with investing and making sure you have passive residual yeah. income. What's your end game? And sub two is awesome. I, I literally stumbled upon Peace Morgan looking at what he's doing. Yep. My wife and I want to get something up in Strawberry Pine. Yep. And I just reached out to Call Tattoo because we've been doing flips yep. in a 55 plus older community and there's yep. 275 parcels on this one plot of land. Yep. And we're going to see if we could potentially sub two, create love a finance, it. whatever. And so he's reaching out to them right now. I think it's corporate owned, but yep. the residents hate what's going on and, yep. and the people are doing a horrible job running it. So it's like, yep. hey, let us step up to the plate. That's what it is, man. And so, yeah, like ask yourselves that question if you guys are an agent, like what's my end game? They don't even know. Like they have no, no there's no exit strategy. Like not at all. I don't like my exit strategy. I'll, I'll probably always be selling houses and buying because I just like the sales. Yeah, why not? I, like for me, I just love sitting at people's tables and solving problems. So that's not something I've ever been like, I have to get out of this. Yeah. Like, I love it. Like the thought of not doing that actually bothers me more. So interesting. Um, but I mean, but at the end of the day, I don't want that to be my only option. Like, oh, I got to make a paycheck today at 80 years old. Let me go out and I don't go hustle a sale. It's going to mm -hmm. be at that point because I want to, 
but along the way I've built wealth for myself, you know, so I don't have to. And that's yeah. where everybody should be at. Most agents don't have a plan in place for that. It's pretty crazy. Not at all. Not at all. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about like, like the P&L, like running your business like a business. A lot of agents don't understand what a P&L profit and uh, loss statement looks like, uh, an SOP looks like, a KPI looks like, so they can yep. focus on that income producing activity. Yep. Can you elaborate a little bit on that for anyone who's thinking about getting the business or in the business and they're not even, they're just like, oh, I got a commission check, now I can buy this or buy that. And they're not giving themselves like a paycheck and separating things. Stop penny pinching like that's the invest in yourself i guess that would be the biggest thing because a lot of agents that's what they do they get a check and they go blow it they get a check they go blow it so when i got my first commission check the immediate first dollar i did went to wrapping my car like the first like the first check was like 48, marketing 4800 bucks i went and got a car wrap right where instead of going and balling out on that because i was like well i'm in my car and i'm driving around everywhere i might as well have this thing wrapped with my name on it and at that time i was doing marketing events for a big doctor's office. So mm -hmm. I was already out at big events like that they were funding to be there. And I was like, well, if I'm going to be in the parking lot showing up, I might as well have my car. So exactly. I'm piggybacking on marketing, right? So um, spent money on that and then got into, you know, running Facebook ads, stuff like that, generating leads at the time. I wasn't, you know, I didn't have the systems we have now, but um, reinvesting yourself and then setting some, 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 some cash aside. But a lot of people don't want to reinvest into their business. And I can tell you guys right now, like it takes money to make money. So um focus on the you know you guys are ever curious if you're doing things right on a pnl side of things draw a line down the middle and say is this a money-making activity is this not a money-making activity can i turn this money into more profit can i not right and that'll yeah. really give you some clarity on where you're spending your time energy efforts and money at in your guys's business but you got a budget and secondly to add on to the pnl thing you guys need to set yourself up with a successful tax strategy uh, because when you're self-employed and trust me you start making good money they're gonna start taxing the heck out of you set yourself up on a PLLC so that you guys are taxed after income instead of getting taxed on your gross income, bump yourself back down a couple tax brackets. So every agent that comes into our brokerage, we require them to set up on a PLLC. We set them up their W-2 pay stub payroll opportunity. So that okay. way now they are an employee of their PLLC. There's a lot of tax strategy involved. It's not always about making more money. It's about, hey, where can I save money? Mm. AKA why I buy a lot of rental property so I can use that as a, you know, basically tax depreciation strategy to lower my tax incomes. So... I love that. I love that. And that's how I saw Justin Mercer. Yep. I mean, he had his billboards everywhere and my yep. wife and I were getting off the 202. And I said, that guy, one day I'm going to work with that guy. Yep. And he inspired me because I saw that. Yep. And there's so many, like I, we did the same thing, lift off agent truck, wrap that. Yep. Same thing with uh, the GTR. I'm going to put the little uh, logo on the back with a QR code for lift off. Yep. And if we just get two or three clients closed, I'm going to take that money and take a portion of it, pay the registration taxes and you yep. know, the little things that I'll have to pay on a monthly basis to, to cover that expense. Yep. The fact that your car is sitting inside the parking lot and you're inside, now the car is working for you as yep. you're not there, you know? Yep. So I, I love all those those strategies. And I think a lot of agents would think about that because they don't. And then they find themselves, I had multiple clients, I have a $50,000 tax application and I have to cancel services because I have to figure out how to pay this. Like, yep. that's not how it works. Like, uh, You guys need to look at your business as a business. Like a lot of people are, I'm a, I'm a door opener. Like that's what, like, mm -hmm. you can really wrap your mind around, okay, I'm just an employee of my business. That's the best piece yeah. of advice I can give you guys. Because a lot of the times you think you are the business and you're not. Nope. If you can take yourself out of it and say, okay, I'm just an employee. Um, I'm in charge of the marketing department. I'm in charge of the accounting department. I'm in charge of the sales department and I'm in charge of the customer service department. And you sit around and you evaluate how you're doing in all aspects of that. And would you hire yourself or would you fire yourself in each one of those departments? If you were working for me and I was hiring you to generate leads, would you be doing a good job on lead gen, right? Would I fire you? Or, you know, like ask yourself those questions. Like, <laughs> how am I performing within my own business right now? And I think when you take that bird's eye view out, it's not all about you, even though it is your business. Yeah. To run a successful real estate business, it's all encompassing. It's so much more than, oh, cool, I can go run a transaction and get paid. Problem is, that's where 70% of the agents think about. They don't actually say, Am I a well-rounded business owner? And as you get a little more money in your pocket, how can you leverage that, right? Go mm -hmm. hire a transaction coordinator. Mm -hmm. Go hire a marketing company. If you're not good at marketing, go hire all these things that you're not good at so you can buy your time back, put it into things that's going to make you even more money, right? Yep. Why spend your time doing paperwork with those six hours when you're like, realistically, if I'm good at marketing, let me take that six hours. I'll pay a TC. Let me take my six hours back and generate more leads. That's going to make you more money. But a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to spend $300. Yeah, but that $300 just cost you $8,000 on a new lead potential to close the deal. 
think about this guys. <laughs> this is why the $15,000 in coaching is so important yeah, and why you got to get in bigger rooms and whoever's listening and watching and potentially wants to join the team, pick your brain. Can they DM? Can they reach out to you? We're always looking for good agents at the brokerage. Yeah. Uh, you guys can drop me a DM, shoot me a text, whatever you guys want to do. I offer private coaching as well. Like all kinds of options. Yeah. I love that. And that's what it's all about here on real estate for technology unleashed to be able to serve the community, give back and be a resource, um, yeah. unbiased resource. We're not a specific brokerage or whatever. We appreciate Appreciate Liftoff for sponsoring the show for yep. the technology, everything for us to do this. And as we get closer to the end of the show, um, what would you like our viewers and listeners to take from today's episode to apply to the business today to have more massive success? I think bigger. That's the thing. Like think bigger Let's for go. where you guys are at. You know, I didn't think very big because nobody showed me how to think big and I didn't see the potential, you know. But if you guys want to see the potential in your business, if you feel like there's more out there for you, like if you feel like you're kind of stuck start going and finding people that are doing big things and it'll inspire you right because i didn't know what i didn't know yeah uh you know again working in a small brokerage i didn't know any other top performing agents i kind of had these like blinders on i, I didn't know what a tc was i didn't know what a team i didn't know none of these things I, I didn't know any structure uh it wasn't until i started hanging out with and paying attention to other people that were doing a lot more than me that i was like whoa this is this box can be a whole lot bigger than the one mm -hmm. i'm playing in right now um, and then, yeah, just start putting yourself around those people. That's the thing, you know, collaborations freaking huge. Like people, this, this business is super weird. Like we're all enemies. Like everybody's been watching, you know, selling sunset, <laughs> like, like some of the biggest players in this business that most would be like, Oh, that's your competition. We're all friends. Like we yes. all learn from each other. Like, yes, I'm really good at certain things that they're not, that they, they call me all the time. And then same thing. Like I, the other day just called one of my buddies who's been an agent for 20 something freaking years. Like good. I'm like, Hey. I know you've ran into this. How would you structure this? Mm. Right? We all help each other. Yeah. And if you're just having to close mine, like I'm not going to call. I'm not going to ask for help. My pride's too high to reach out. And guys, you're totally screwing yourself. Like, get Amen. out there. And ask for help. Like, it's okay to say, hey, I just don't understand this. I'm not this good at this. Let me go find the guy or the girl that is phenomenal at this. And let me shoot him a message. Let me shoot him a DM. Let me just see what it's going to take to get in the world that they can help me because you've got nowhere to go but up. Yes. Otherwise, you're just going to stay put. You guys, like asking somebody for help isn't going to take you any lower. You no. Have, you have to understand it's 100% potential upswing for you. It's not like you ask for help and you get buried. You know what I mean? Amen. So. Yeah, 100%. Crazy. No, I absolutely love that. And uh, behind the scenes, I'm doing the live, taking advantage of that opportunity, tagging Blake, because it's all about cross pollination of networks. And yeah. we're all in the same community here in the greater Phoenix, Arizona, Maricopa County area. I mean, dude, Blake, this was absolutely phenomenal. You okay. are a wealth of knowledge. I appreciate you giving us a piece of your legacy that okay. will now be time capsuled on our YouTube channel and all streaming platforms. Yeah. And, appreciate you know, Thank of you. course, man, of course. And so if you haven't already done so, like, subscribe to the notification bell, check out Blake. Links are down below. Check out the video of him talking about getting more deliberate and focused on your target demographic. Um, and as always, it is our intention for you to take things for our episode, apply to your business, have more massive success. We appreciate you being on the show. And uh, until next time. See ya.